Hi there and welcome back. Today I'm going to be working on this trident or Chinese maple. If you find the following content helpful, then you can thank me by clicking the thanks button just below the video. This tree has been in my collection for a number of years now. It was originally collected from a wine farm uh, in, an, in the area that I live in, in the Western Cape. I've been making the tree over for the last few years and it has now grown or developed in spring. And these uh, shoots have elongated and uh, th there was wire that I applied during autumn last season and I've noticed that it has started to bite in. So I'm now going to remove the inner leaves without removing the leaves at the tips. Once I expose the structure, then I'll see where the, uh, the wire is biting into the branches, remove that wire, and then I'm also going to uh, apply some wire to branches that have developed now in spring and uh, just position them better. You will notice that there are some leaves that, have, uh, that are deformed and damaged. This is due to an ongoing fight that I have against something called anthracnose, which is a bacteria that influences the formation of the leaves. To do the leaf cutting, you can either use a pair of defoliation shears, uh, which are designed specifically to obviously defoliate leaves, or you can use a pair of uh, trimming scissors. Whichever you use, make sure that it's nice and sharp and uh, this is going to make your work a lot easier. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to remove all of the leaves. It's not a full defoliation. All I'm trying to do is get to see the structure and uh, so that I can see where wire needs to be removed. And um, so I'm starting at the top of the tree, working to the bottom. And this way, by the time that you're finished the tree, all the leaves will be off. Um, if you start at the bottom of the tree, obviously you're going to sit with a bunch of leaves that are um, accumulating at the bottom rather than ending up with a clean tree as you've finished. I've completed removing the leaves that I wanted to and now I can observe or inspect the structure of the tree. So you can see some branches, the wire has not bitten in yet because these branches haven't actually developed as strongly as some of the others. So this wire can remain. There are however other branches where the wire bite is very clear. Uh, so this wire will need to be removed. The wire bite is pretty severe. Uh, it would have been ideal if I'd caught it a week or two ago. However, it's not too bad and because this tree is still young in development as a bonsai, these structural branches will uh, very likely heal over the scars that will be left by the removal of the wire. To safely remove wire when it's bitten in like this, the best is actually to use a pair of pliers and essentially unwind it. So it would be better not to try and cut the wire off. However, in most cases, I would always rec recommend cutting the wire rather than trying to unravel it uh, because you always put the branch that you are unraveling the wire uh, from if you're unwinding it at risk. So it's better to cut it off. Now, a very common problem with trident maples or any other very fast growing species similar to trident or Chinese maples is that especially in spring, they can form these very long uh, shoots uh, which lead to these very long internodal distances. Now depending on where on the tree this branch is you can keep it uh, and continue building ramification on that branch. Alternatively if it's in the apical area like this branch is it'll have to be pruned because it's simply not going to be possible to build up any kind of real uh, ramification if you have an internode of this length and only start the forking of the branches at this point. So this branch will have to be cut back down to this point and, um, and then it'll be developed again from there. So, to, so buds will form at this point and uh, be allowed to develop. Now, earlier on when I mentioned what I was going to do, uh, meaning the leaves would be pruned away or trimmed, I said that I would not trim the tips of the branches. And this is so that the elongation does not stop. Now this is applicable to branches where you still want some thickening to occur at the base. 
but on other branches where the branch is thick enough those branches can be pruned back to inner dormant buds. Sometimes you'll get a scenario where you have a branch that's elongated to this point and uh, that's how you pruned it in previous years because there wasn't anything else to, to prune it back to. Uh, but the, 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 the tree has now shot these two uh, branchlets and this actually will make a better uh, ramification or branch than this elongation of this branch as it is now. In a case like this then it's best to just cut that away and then continue forming the branch using these new younger branchlets. Sometimes you'll get uh, growth that forms like this at the base of a structural branch uh, but you're not going to be able to use this so it's best just to break that off or if, you, if it's thick enough you cut it off and uh, don't allow it to develop any further. So what I was doing here is that uh, wherever there were branches that were thick enough, I cut back to a set of buds, to the first set of buds. So you'll get two shoots, buds activate, activating at this point, and those will develop again. And uh, so I, I only did this really in the apical area because the branches at the bottom of the, the tree still need to thicken up. So those I'm going to be wiring. Most of the branches on this tree have been grafted on uh, using predominantly approach graft. Here I'm doing another approach graft and ultimately I'm wanting this bud that's still developing over here to actually be the future branch. So this is going to be removed and of course this side is also going to be removed. But a little trick is that if you're wanting to strengthen a branch then you can apply some wire to it and direct it up towards the sun. Uh, the more sun it gets, the stronger the branch will become. There were some extremely large scars. As you can see, this is all callus tissue. Uh, but it, it, over the time that I've had the tree, I've been healing it over. Now one can go back in and activate the edge of this callus using a grafting knife or gin tool or something, um, then sealing it again and it just accelerates the healing process but if it's a little bit risky to do it very early spring because the callus formation particularly on a trident maple is very aggressive and so it can actually bubble uh, it's not a very smooth callus formation so it's better to wait until later in the season when the sap flow is not as explosive to do that uh, but i will show that to you in a future video i'm sure if you found that content helpful and you'd like to thank me for it please do so now by clicking the thanks button just below the video I've now completed the work that I wanted to do on this trident maple. Deciduous trees are very much uh, a case of making small incremental changes or advances in the development and ramification of the tree. They take a long time to develop. Uh, unlike conifers, this, uh, you know, like a juniper, for instance, where you can very quickly bend branches and adapt foliage so that you look like you have immediate uh, foliage pads with deciduous trees if of course you want to develop them properly you need to take the time to do it because you need to really start with a well-formed trunk then start with structural branches and develop everything from from that 
uh, which all takes which all takes time. It's very easy to make a deciduous tree look very good when it's covered with leaves, as you might have been quite impressed with the tree before I actually defoliated or partially defoliated it. Um, but now everything is uh, more revealed. And really with deciduous trees, the best time to display them is when they are leafless so that you can see the structure. And uh, so this tree has to be developed in such a manner that it would lend itself to that. So we make every time it gets to the bench or on the turntable, uh, it, it, I take it one step further. Just to recap the work that I did on the tree today was uh, it was wired in late autumn last in the previous growing season that wire I had noticed had started to bite in. So I needed to remove the wire so that it didn't do any further damage. And in order to do that, I needed to remove leaves. So it was a partial defoliation um, and that then exposed the structure of the tree. I was also then able to see, so originally when I uh, removed the leaves, I didn't trim the tips. The reason for that is that I was not sure at that time which branches still needed to elongate so that I could uh, thicken the base of those branches and those ones which were already thick enough and could be trimmed back to two dormant buds. And so once the leaves were removed, I was able to confirm which branches were able to be cut back and that was mainly in the apical area. In the lower area of the tree, those branches still need to be thickened up some so the tips were not cut. I then applied wire. Uh, after removing the previous wire, I applied new wire to branches that had developed this season just to give them a basic shape. And uh, that wire will remain on probably for three or four weeks at the most, and then it'll have to be removed again. So after this work, I expect that the tree is going to push the dormant buds at the points where, at the cut sites basically, and um, will redevelop again. So fertilizing at this time of the year, uh, which is early spring, if you feed, if you're developing trees, you can feed quite aggressively. This will obviously give you or support that new growth very well. If you are, uh, if you're working on re really refined trees, then obviously it's better to withhold the fertilizer as much as possible because otherwise the growth that does get, that does develop in spring is probably going to be too coarse uh, two longer internodes for you to actually use in the structure or in the ramification of the tree. So it's best to withhold fertilizer on refined uh, trees. So this tree is very much in development. It's important to uh, realize or to appreciate which techniques and how those techniques are applied to the various phases of development of a bonsai tree. This tree is very much in development still and so I am using branch elongation or sacrifice, it's almost kind of sacrificial, sacrificial branches, uh, although they're not being used to th fatten the trunk, but they are being used to thicken at the base of those branches so that they can then be cut back. So that the ideal or the goal is to have uh, a trunk with a sacrifice branch that looks um, looks logical, uh, looks natural in terms of the step down from the thick trunk to the branch. So you don't want a spin, sp spindly thin little uh, main branch. You need to allow that to, to develop a, a fair amount of girth. And then from there on, the every, every subsequent ramification or fork in the branch is going to become thinner and thinner, ultimately ending up with very fine twiggery for the, at the silhouette or the out, outline of your canopy. Thank you very much for watching. Until next Friday, take care. Goodbye.